John, answer troll. I'm supposed to antagonize a few members of your trivial species. I have to start somewhere and someone, so I am starting with you, and now. It's going to be pointless and unpleasant, mostly for me. Actually, you know what? I'm not really feeling this at all. Goodbye. She's not here right now. She's asleep. But, okay, see ya. Is this... Your human sarcasm that I've heard about, that you always use, and that is basically a terrible way to communicate. Um, no? I thought that was the thing you did. The rose human, specifically. Oh yeah, that's me, I am the rose human. Look at me, I am so smart with all these snooty words and complicated things to say. I am the queen of books! Okay, these are definitely insincere statements. Why do you work so hard at being so awful? Oh, I'm so burned. These burns are crazy. Can we just cut to the chase and be friends already? These cat and mouse games are so dumb. You know we're just all going to be friends at some point anyway. Have we spoken before? I don't know, uh, maybe? It's so hard to keep track with all your time nonsense. Now that I think about it, it is pretty conceivable that I will talk to you again in the past after this conversation. That's because you guys always do things the hard way. And the dumb way. I should figure out how the viewport feature of this application works, so I can see what such a primitive creature looks like. Haha, <laughs> well, I know what you guys look like. You kind of look like Howie Mandel from Little Monsters. Even though, to be perfectly frank, he was kind of a big monster. Because he was a big goofy adult and Fred Savage was like his child prankster sidekick. Is this an adversary you have encountered on your quest? No, it's a movie. You should ask John about it because he thinks it's awesome, which it is. It seems you put stock in John's assessment of things. Even really uninteresting things that are pretty terrible to listen to. He is either the leader of your party or you hold whatever the human equivalent of mating fondness for him is. Yeah, I got him this really cool bunny for his birthday, and it's really nicely knitted and everything, because I'm basically in love with him, you're right. <laughs> uh, okay. Heh, <laughs> just kidding, I'm sure John knows it because I'm really thoughtful, and I bet he'd really appreciate the present. And would say thank you if he were here. Okay, human courtship is definitely a strange thing, and it's sort of blowing my mind listening to this. I think I'll talk to someone else now. Why don't you talk to John? Maybe... When along his timeline would you recommend communicating with him? Oh man, I don't know. Why don't you pick the time that'll make the most complicated mess out of everything imaginable? You know that's what you're gonna do anyway. Considering that you're obviously not that smart, and basically understand whipping bug winged fuck all about even the most elementary temporal mechanics, I am a bit perplexed as to why I find myself so vehemently fondling the short end of the antagonism stick here. Kind of irritating. I'm going to talk to your comrades, this John Human, and figure out what's going on. Okay, if you talk to him in the past, you'll understand even less buggy webs fuck all about time. And he'll be confused, so maybe pay something from this conversation to him, I don't know. And if you talk to him in the future, he'll know all this stuff, like things you said to him but haven't said yet. And then you'll be confused, sorry. That's just how this works. Don't say I didn't warn you. Consider me fully briefed on the matter. Until next time, Rose. Next time, in the past. Yeah, bye! <laughs> If you're not too busy still setting up the network, perhaps you could come show me how to activate the viewport. I am, in fact, too busy still setting it up. Whoa, here's an idea. Press F1. My keyboard is missing the F1 key. Lies. Don't bother me, I'm not in the mood. If I see one more snarl of wires kind of jutting out and being tangled or whatever, I gotta perform some sort of athletic fucking somersault off the deep end and get a call from the president or some shit. So go away. You used to like to talk more. If I recall, I was typically the one who would solicit reprieves from your nonsense. So I don't know what happened. That was before I knew we were all going to die. And no one believed me. And now look at you all, all believing me suddenly. Hmm. Uncanny. Then, why are you doing this? 
setting up these stations for us. To get you all off my bulge about it. But I won't troll any of them personally. No way. Kinda juvenile. But you guys go knock yourselves out, okay? See the menu up top? Fiddle around with that until you open the viewport. I did fiddle with it, to no avail. If you can't figure shit out by fucking around, you don't belong near computers. Kinda like with registered sex offenders in schools. If you move to a new town, you have to go up to your neighbor's door and warn them about how stupid you are, and give them a chance to hide all their innocent technology. And vandalize your house. Rose and Dave, shut up and jam. Dave shows you some of his sweet gear. Wow, he is so cool. Rose. First, be the pony. Second, follow mom. You are now the pony. You stand outside of some ruins which your beloved master's mother entered recently. Outside you find a striking scarcity of oats or greenery or anything at all that is delicious to chew on. This is as a compelling reason as any to follow her inside. Maplehoof. Enter. You go in the ruins. Your clopping hooves echo throughout the cavernous and foreboding environment. But you are too stupid to be nervous. Your powerful snout detects the scent of Rose's mom. She went this way. No. Maplehoof, follow scent. Good grief, look at all this grist. A large and terrible monster must have surely been slain here. Maplehoof, collect grist. You pick up all the grist and store it in Rose's grist cache. This is entirely too much grist of too many exotic types for such a low-level player. But you'll take it. You don't look a gift horse in the pink heart tattoo. The grist overflow is gathered by the grist gutter utility, supplied by Grist Torrent. It is stored and gradually redirected to other players. Let's proceed. Rose's mom stands on a small platform and disappears. You are a little nervous about transportalizing yourself. As a quadruped, grizzly bisection strikes you as a very real possibility. Even though you're too dumb to think of such things. John, first, be the hat. Second, find dad. Rose stops being the pony just in time for John to start being the hat. The breeze carries you to where you need to go. You settle down in front of a man in sore need of a fresh hat. He gathers the clean hat, along with a shoe he found through similarly serendipitous means to replace the one he lost. John, check out Rose's Alchemeter. You decide to try out the code Dave Sprite gave you. John, make item. 
This thing is huge and costs a fortune. Half a million pieces of bilgrist, garnets, diamonds and gold, and a single piece of quartz. There's no way you can make that, let alone wield it even with your ghost gloves. Now John, shrink it down. You use the Alchemitor's scaling upgrade to reduce it to a more manageable and affordable size. You make a weapon called Fear No Anvil. John, pester Dave Sprite. So, what's this? The thing the code made. Really powerful hammer. How do you know? I thought you couldn't use hammers. I can't. Better be, though. Got it from Hephaestus. Who's that? Really, really tough, tough to, to kill, kill, dude. You killed him for it? Nope. How'd you get it, then? Shenanigans. Okay. Rose, check out Dave's computer. It seems you have a visitor. TA, fix GA's computer. There's nothing to fix. Just got to open up the viewport. It's easy. Rose, examine laptop. Someone has been using your pester chum account. And you somehow doubt the culprit was this young, upright amphibian presently throwing a fit. Rose, go find John. You hurry to the door so that you can catch John before he goes gallivanting off somewhere. But it seems your door is ajar. Funny, you don't remember leaving your door ajar. Even though it's sort of absurd for you to take note of such a thing, considering John recently left your room. Oh well, it doesn't matter. You will now proceed through this door uneventfully. You get dumped on by a bucket full of hellacious blue phlegm aneurysm gushes as a thoughtful but mischievous thank you gesture from John. Your prankster's gambit plunges to an all-time low. You cannot hope to defeat Egbert in a prank-off. He's simply the best there is. John, equip trusty rocket. Rose obviously isn't waking up anytime soon. Might as well take some time to explore. And maybe stop by again later. Why, Dr. Meowgan? Do you want to come along for the ride? It sure looks that way. Okay, hop aboard then. Adventure awaits! Where is he off to now? Uh, at least you have this little fellow here to keep you company. You will name him Viceroy Bubbles Von Salamancer. Dave, be the puppet. You have no idea what the hell that means. But yeah, you can kiss that obnoxious puppet goodbye. Maybe now you can get a decent night's sleep. <laughs> okay, this is the most ridiculous thing you have ever seen. What is taking place here is almost certainly illegal. You're not sure which laws are being broken, but it's probably a lot. Authority Regulator, follow. John, explore. You spy a boat on the shore of one of the islands below. You wonder who could be out here rowing in the middle of the ocean. John, investigate. Hoofprints in the sand. The mystery deepens. John, enter. There are many frightening and powerful monsters in here. John, aggress. You stun them with the cool time powers of your awesome new hammer, and then dispatch them swiftly. 
Now, it is suggested that you collect the spoils. The good Dr. Spengler helps you gather the riches. John, proceed. There's a platform over here. Who guess it'll just go stand on it? Oh wow, it just made you disappear! 